So I made a terrible Minecraft clone. And what, what it basically boils down to is just a really efficient cube render. But I think there's like some really cool kind of optimization techniques that I learned along the way, um, which I wanted to share with you guys in this video. I started off with the most naive approach possible. I simply defined a struct called cube sprite for each uh, cube. Um, and then I basically copied in like a full cube mesh that I got off the internet. And then I simply just iterated through each sprite in an array and then just set all of the relevant OpenGL state before rendering each triangle in the mesh individually. And uh, here's the result, running at an incredible 5 frames per second. Um, and I can joke about it now, but truth be told, when I first encountered this problem, I was dumbfounded because I had no clue how to try and solve it. So I did what I think everyone should do when they encounter a performance problem like this. I just measured everything I could find. So here's the time profile for the program we just saw. And I'm just gonna navigate to the main function here. And I think one thing that should be immediately obvious is that the majority of time is spent in rendering the cubes, which confirms our suspicion that that's probably where the issue is. And if we go for a further breakdown, we'll see a lot of time is spent on the actual draw calls in GL draw arrays. However, a substantial amount of time is also spent in setting uniforms and setting state. So we have a couple different kind of um, places that take a lot of time uh, to try and attack and try and resolve in order to make this program faster. So based on those results, I just did like the super obvious fix of just moving some of the, the uniform uh, buffer calls to uh, a new function that gets run before the main loop instead of every frame. And just from that, like it's visually apparent that the performance is significantly better. In fact, this program gets approximately double the frame rate of the previous one. While the previous one was hitting about um, 15 frames per second, this is getting like a clean 30. Uh, however, there is still some choppiness and some room to improve. So again, I think the best solution is just to go back and look at the profile again. And here's the profile for that. Um, and I just want to highlight like one thing that I found really interesting was that the percentage of time that the uniform calls taken barely decreased by like four or five percent, which was so interesting because we noticed such a substantial increase in the frame rate. So if anyone knows like why that's happening, please tell me. So what's the solution? We already tried messing around with uh, how we um, put the uniform data in the GPU and that did give us a substantial increase in time, but it's still not enough. Um, because a lot of time now is being spent on the actual draw calls. Let me illustrate. So currently what we're doing is we're taking the mesh and we're uploading it into a vertex buffer. So that's fine, right? But then every time we want to render a new cube, we need to take, let's pretend this is like position information, right? This is the position of the cube. Um, our app here, our app's logic needs to talk to the OpenGL system, like the OpenGL framework on Mac OS. It needs to take this vertex, encode it into a message the GPU can understand, which will be something like, okay, go set this data in some specific part in our in the uniform buffers. This gets sent over there. And then it needs to come up with a whole new message to tell the GPU to take this data here and this data here and the shader data that we've already uploaded and render it. And then rinse and repeat for our other however many vertices we want. And you can see this process will actually take a long time um, in the grand scheme of things because GPUs are really, really fast at computing things, but communication between CPUs and GPUs aren't, are actually a lot slower because OpenGL needs to do a lot of checks. It needs to make sure that you didn't pass in a null pointer. It needs to make sure that the data sizes match with uh, what you promised you wanted in the shader. So there's a lot of work that, uh, there's a lot of, I guess, unnecessary work we're doing in repeatedly encoding these messages. That's why um, a solution, a solution to this problem is something called instance rendering, which is basically when we upload the mesh onto the GPU and we just tell the GPU, okay, 
do this work 10 times. Render the same cube 10 times. Okay. Now, this kind of doesn't solve any of our problems yet because it still is the same cube in the same position. We're not, it doesn't, it's not going to look like rendering multiple different cubes. But where we can get a bit creative is we can tell the GPU that we don't want to upload one vertex, we want to upload an array of vertices. So uh, in terms of our encoding, it's like we pass all three of these at the same time into the uniform buffer, which is so much faster, especially when instead of three vertices, we're operating on the scales of thousands of vertices. Right. And now we tell the GPU, okay, render this cube a thousand times, or in this case, three times, right? Um, except for each time we render it, we'll just tell it to use a different index in our position array. And with this method, we can render theoretically an infinite amount of cubes um, without worrying about memory and stuff in one draw call which will drastically reduce our rendering time. So when you're actually trying to understand instance rendering, you can get a pretty good idea just by looking at how the shader changes. As you can see, um, instead of having a single model matrix and a single color, we now have arrays of model matrices and colors. And we basically render each cube. Uh, we, for each cube, we basically pick out its corresponding index from that array. And this is again, super useful because it lets us minimize our draw calls and minimize the amount of time we're spending interfacing with the GPU. Yeah, and here's the, here's the program we're running with the instance rendering stuff uh, implemented. So I'm just working on a very small set of cubes here, but I can increase it. So it seems to be working fine and oh God. <laughs> I think I might have given the game away um, when I was talking about the shaders, but uh, there is there is a problem when it comes to rendering a lot of cubes with this method. This basically just comes down to the fact that uniform buffers are never really meant to store lots of vertex data. In fact, on my uh, system, I can only store 256 four by four uh, matrices before like the shader refuses to compile because there's not enough space in my GPU. Um, this basically means we need to find an alternative approach to this um, because it's clear that uniform buffers, unless we uh, come up with some sort of system where we swap in cubes in between rendering them, um, it's clear that uniform buffers won't work. Luckily, we've already, we already have experience with a certain type of buffer that's really good at storing large amounts of data and can be statically drawn. Vertex buffer. So, the interesting thing about vertex buffers is that they really aren't just meant for vertices. Um, vertex buffers have the name vertex buffers because that's how they're used in fixed pipeline rendering, which was like the more archaic form of rendering that you can get access to if you're using like OpenGL 1.0 or OpenGL ES or something like that. But vertex buffers in actuality are some of the most general purpose buffers the GPU has to offer. Um, in fact, I am pretty sure in GPU memory, they're allocated in a similar way to a compute, like how a buffer in a, how an arbitrary buffer in a compute shader would work. Um, which means that we don't, we can't just put uh, mesh data in, but we can also uh, upload our position data in, in much the same way. You just need to create a vertex buffer object, a, a VBO, and uh, just set the data in the VBO and it'll get uploaded into the vertex buffers. Now, our main problem is that currently the way we've been doing rendering, if we render like this, for each triangle that we render, it'll just cycle through the different positions, which is not something we want. Luckily, we can configure OpenGL um, to basically for to basically iterate through the triangles on a per vertex basis but it'll iterate through the positions on a per instance basis, which is exactly the sort of behavior we want. This also has the benefit of allowing us to increase our, um, increase the, like the size of vertices we render at the same time. Because again, like I said, um, 
vertex buffers are meant to be much more general purpose and for that reason they they can get much bigger in size which is super useful if we're trying to render thousands of cubes so code wise it should seem really kind of familiar uh, to what we've done so far and really kind of s similar to what i kind of demonstrated on paper right all we're really doing is we're setting vertex buffers like we usually do and then after that um, in our shader instead of uh, creating uniform arrays we're just accepting uh, the sprite position and sprite color as a normal vertex inputs and yeah and finally using this method of instance rendering you can get pretty damn close to the minecraft clone i demoed at the start of the video right now there are a few more optimizations i implemented such as mesh culling visibility testing and texture packing in order to get this like really crispy level of performance um but if i'm being completely honest right i think the main point in this video is not the specific optimizations it's more like the general process anyways <clears throat> thanks so much for watching and i hope you found this video informative and useful clickety clack out